My 25 Years in Provence, Reflections on Then and Now, by Peter Mail, Appetite, 192 pages, $29.95. Penguin Random House Earlier this year, we lost Peter Mail, one of the most successful and influential memorists of our era. He died at the age of 78, after a brief illness, in his adopted home of Provence, where he spent his last several decades living the dream. So, let's skip the morning and, instead, celebrate his life. Not only did he live the dream, he practically invented the concept of doing so. Mail worked in advertising and, later, authored several sex ed books for young people until, in the 1980s, he and wife Jenny decided to give up their careers and moved from Devon, England, to the south of France. There, Mail intended to finally write a novel. Instead, he wrote A Year in Provence, a memoir detailing the couple's adjustment to the quirks of French country life. The book became an international bestseller, one that inspired people to follow their dreams and, arguably, even changed the way people write and think about food and travel. Now, with the posthumous release of Mail's final book, My 25 Years in Provence, it seems like the perfect time to reflect on his legacy. My 25 Years is, itself, a retrospective, beginning with the author looking back to the nervous thrill he and Jenny experienced with their decision to move to France. Some of the stories are continuations on the themes from the original book, his love for good, simple rustic food paired with fresh pink wine, the joys of cafe life and the fun of running into secretive truffle hunters. Other tales, though, deal with the aftermath of his success. There are some, for example, who blame Mail for ruining the region, since his memoir inspired more people to explore the countryside of Alpes d'Haute Provence, as opposed to just hitting the beach towns of the French Riviera. This only increased after his 2004 book, A Good Year, was turned into a film, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Russell Crowe and Marion Cotillard. Mail's writings, though, not only inspired people to explore the French countryside, they encouraged travelers to explore the world differently. When Mail took the plunge, he noted that the vast majority of Brits abroad drove around with a car full of biscuits, marmalade and teas, all the comforts of home, so they would never have to be inconvenienced by having to eat the local fare. By contrast, the males left it all behind, fully immersing themselves in the food, drink, language and culture of their adopted home. They would not be expats with a picturesque hillside home secretly stuffed with packages for Marks and Sparks. When friends from England visited and offered to bring down British staples, even single malt scotch, the males politely declined. They had grown to prefer French pasties. Their adventures and attitudes inspired countless people to take leave of their jobs and try out a year in France, Tuscany or even Thailand, to immerse themselves in a new culture. The mail book quickly became the model for travel writing, especially food-focused travel writing, and countless memoirs have followed. Many are about transformation, since the author usually learns about the simple pleasures of slow food that emphasizes traditional methods and regional ingredients, which were lacking in North American fast food culture and British boil in the foil cuisine. And it wasn't only writer's mail inspired to dive into new cultures. The ethos went mainstream, inspiring tourists to walk past hard rock cafes and Burger King outlets in search of the small dives preferred by locals. North Americans used to seek out the comfort and safety of big chains, these days they're just as likely to sign up for guided street meat tours. That's not all on mail, obviously. Other factors, including immigration, cheaper flights, social media and demographic changes have all shaped the way we eat, drink and travel. But a year in Provence should be given its due, since, when he wrote it in 1989, only a few adventurous folks thought beyond chain restaurants, cruises and beach resorts when they planned out the itinerary. Some people say millennials are responsible for killing off the chain restaurants and busting, experience, travel. That may be true, they're currently living the dream. But Mill deserves a lot of credit for having sketched the blueprint for what the dream should look like in the first place. Christine Sismundo is the author of America Walks Into a Bar, a spirited history of taverns and saloons, speakeasies and grog shops, Oxford University Press, read this before you read that.
Get our books newsletter to your inbox. New N E W S L E T T E R A U T H O R I T Y S I G N up.